As a park ranger, I spend most of my days wandering through the vast expanse of the forest, monitoring wildlife and ensuring the safety of visitors. It's a quiet job, peaceful even, with the only interruption being the occasional distant call of a lone wolf. But there was one day that shattered that tranquility, a day I'll never forget. It started like any other, the sun casting long shadows through the dense canopy as I embarked on my patrol. The air was crisp, and a gentle breeze rustled through the trees, carrying the scent of pine and damp earth. As I made my way deeper into the woods, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, though I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Then, I heard it. A faint cry for help, soft and desperate, echoing through the trees. My instincts kicked in, and without a second thought, I followed the sound, pushing through the underbrush in the direction of the voice. Hang on, I'm coming, I called out, my heart racing with adrenaline. But as I ventured further into the forest, the voice seemed to dance around me, shifting and weaving through the trees. It was unnerving, disorienting, and try as I might, I couldn't seem to pinpoint its source. Panic began to bubble up inside me, a knot of fear tightening in my chest. Then the forest fell completely silent. I froze my breath catching in my throat as the once lively woods grew eerily still. It was as if the very air had been sucked from the world, leaving behind a suffocating vacuum that pressed down on me like a heavy blanket. And then, just as suddenly as it had vanished, the voice spoke again. But this time, it was different. It sounded distorted, glitched almost like a broken record skipping and stuttering. Goosebumps prickled across my skin as I strained to make sense of the unnatural sound, my mind reeling with confusion and terror. I took a cautious step back, my senses on high alert as I scanned the darkness for any sign of danger. And that's when I saw it. Huddled behind an oak tree was a creature its form twisted and grotesque, its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, fixated on me with an intensity that made my skin crawl. On top of its head were long twisted antlers that glistened like a sharp knife in the moonlight. Its skin was pale and stretched over elongated limbs that seemed to contort and shift with every movement. I knew then with a sickening certainty that I was face to face with a skinwalker. Panic surged through me, primal and raw as I stumbled backward, my mind racing with fear. Every instinct screamed at me to run, to flee from the nightmare unfolding before me. But I couldn't tear my eyes away from the creature. I couldn't bring myself to turn my back to the danger lurking in the shadows. With shaking hands, I reached for my radio, fingers fumbling with the buttons, as I desperately tried to summon help. I raised it to my lips, frantically screaming for help into my radio, and after a couple of seconds, I heard a familiar voice. But this voice did not come from the radio. The voice was coming from behind me, and I knew this voice all too well, because it was my own voice or at least something that sounded scarily similar to it. It was repeating my distress call back to me, only now it sounded robotic. I spun around, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the darkness, but there was nothing, only the oppressive stillness of the forest, broken only by the ragged sound of my own breathing. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the voice vanished leaving behind a deafening void. My mind reeled with confusion, my thoughts a jumbled mess of fear and disbelief. But there was no time to dwell on it, no time to make sense of the madness swirling around me. With one last glance back at the creature, or where it was supposed to be, I turned and ran, my feet 
pounding against the forest floor as I raced toward the safety of civilization. I didn't stop running until I had reached the edge of the forest, the distant glow of streetlights casting long shadows across the pavement. Only then did I dare to look back, half expecting the creature to launch at me from the darkness and drag me back into the dark depths of the forest. But there was nothing. Only the quiet rustle of leaves and the soft murmur of the wind whispering through the trees. And as I stood there, trembling and breathless, I couldn't shake the feeling that the forest was watching me, waiting for me to return to its dark embrace. But I knew one thing for certain. I would never venture into those woods again. I quit my job the next day on the spot, because some things are better left undisturbed, hidden in the shadows where they belong. And I, for one, have no desire to become prey to the horrors that lurk within. As a park ranger, I've seen my fair share of strange things out here in the woods. But nothing, absolutely nothing, could have prepared me for what I encountered deep in the heart of the forest. It was a typical day on the job, patrolling the trails, checking for any signs of wildlife activity or fallen trees. The sun was starting to dip below the horizon, casting long shadows through the trees. I had just finished my rounds and was making my way back to the ranger station when I saw them. Stairs. But not just any stairs. These were old and weather-worn, rising out of the forest floor like something out of a fairy tale. They were made of stone, covered in moss and vines and seemed to stretch up into the darkness above. At first I thought maybe they were part of an old trail that had been forgotten over time. But as I approached, I realized there was something off about them. There was no path leading to or from the stairs, no sign of any kind of structure that they could have belonged to either. They were just there. Curiosity got the better of me, and against my better judgment, I decided to climb them. With each step, a chill ran down my spine. It felt like I was being watched like the very trees around me were whispering secrets that I couldn't quite make out. But still, I pressed on, my heart pounding in my chest. Finally, I reached the top, and what I saw sent a jolt through me. There, beyond the stairs, stood a cabin. But not just any cabin. It was old and decrepit, the windows shattered and the roof caving in. It looked like it hadn't been inhabited in years. I hesitated for a moment, my hand hovering over the handle of my radio. But then I remembered the stories I'd heard from other rangers, tales of strange happenings in these woods, stories of people who had ventured too far off the beaten path and never returned, and I wasn't about to put any of my friends in danger. Despite the unease creeping up my spine, I felt obligated to uncover the truth behind this mystery. With a deep breath, I stepped forward, my flashlight cutting through the darkness as I made my way toward the looming structure. The air grew colder with each step, and a sense of evil intensified as I approached. The cabin stood before me, its wooden exterior weathered and worn, windows boarded up as if to keep something out or trapped inside, perhaps. My heart raced as I reached out and pushed the door open, the hinges creaking in protest. Inside, the air was thick with dust and the faint scent of decay. I moved cautiously through the rooms, my footsteps echoing off the walls. And then, just as I was about to turn back, I heard something. A whisper soft yet intense, came from one of the corners of the cabin. My blood ran cold as I strained my ears to make out the words. 
I didn't need to be told twice. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and bolted for the door, the whispering growing louder with each step. I burst back out, the stairs looming before me like a gateway to another world. Without looking back, I sprinted down them, the sound of whispering fading behind me. It wasn't until I reached the safety of the ranger station that I allowed myself to breathe again, my hands shaking as I recounted the events to a ranger. And now, as I sit here writing this, I can't help but wonder what lives in that cursed cabin. But one thing's for certain. I won't be the one to find out. Because some mysteries are better left unsolved. And some places are better left unexplored. As a park ranger, I've seen my fair share of strange occurrences in the forest, but nothing could have prepared me for what I stumbled upon that fateful evening. It was a chilly autumn night, the kind that sends a shiver down your spine despite the layers of clothing. I received a distress call over the radio, reporting that two hikers had gone missing in the forest. Without hesitation, I grabbed my flashlight and set out into the darkness, determined to find them. The forest was eerily silent as I made my way through the thick underbrush, my senses heightening with each step. The beam of my flashlight cut through the darkness, casting long, ominous shadows on the trees. I called out their names, hoping for a response, but all I heard was the rustling leaves in the wind. As I ventured deeper into the forest, a feeling of unease settled over me like a heavy blanket. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, lurking just out of sight. Every snap of a twig or distant howl of a wolf made my blood run cold. Then, just as I was about to give up hope, I stumbled upon something that made me shudder. In a small clearing illuminated by the faint moonlight, I saw them, the two missing hikers lying motionless on the ground, their bodies twisted in unnatural positions. My heart pounded in my chest as I rushed to their side, checking for any signs of life. But it was too late. They were gone, their eyes staring blankly into the night sky above. A wave of nausea washed over me as I realized the gravity of the situation. But that's when I noticed something even more disturbing. Surrounding the bodies were strange symbols carved into the earth. Symbols I couldn't begin to decipher. It was as if they had stumbled upon some ancient ritual gone horribly wrong. Trembling with fear, I stumbled backward, my mind racing with questions. What had happened to them? Who or what was responsible for this gruesome scene? And most importantly, would I be next? With a sense of dread weighing heavily on my shoulders, I knew I had to get out of there and alert the authorities. But as I turned to leave, I heard it. A low, guttural growl emanating from the darkness, sending a chill down my spine. I froze in place, my heart hammering in my chest as I scanned the trees for any sign of movement. But there was nothing just the oppressive silence of the forest, broken only by the sound of my own ragged breathing. With a newfound sense of urgency, I sprinted back the way I had come, my footsteps echoing through the night. I didn't dare look back, afraid of what I might see lurking in the shadows. Eventually, I burst through the tree line and into safety, gasping for breath as I collapsed to the ground. I fumbled for my radio, my hands shaking as I called for help, desperately trying to explain what I had seen. When the rescue team arrived, they couldn't locate the bodies of the missing hikers. It's as if they vanished without a trace, 
swallowed up by the darkness. The authorities have launched a full-scale search, but I fear it may be too late for them. As I stare out into the night, I can't help but wonder what became of those poor souls. Did they meet a fate worse than death, lost to some force of pure evil lurking in the shadows? Or are they still out there somewhere, trapped in a nightmare from which they'll never awaken? One thing's for certain. I'll never be able to shake the feeling of dread that washes over me whenever I think of them. And as long as those hikers remain missing, I don't think I'll ever truly find peace. As I stumbled out from a house party, the chilly night air hit me like a slap in the face. The alcohol had dulled my senses, but I knew I had to make my way home before I became completely disoriented. With the GPS on my phone not making much sense, I decided to take a shortcut through the dense forest. It wasn't the smartest decision, I know, but I was feeling adventurous and thought I could handle it. With the dim glow of my phone's flashlight guiding my way, I ventured deeper into the dense thicket of trees. The darkness seemed to swallow me whole, and the eerie silence was only broken by the occasional rustle of leaves or the hoot of an owl. Despite the liquid courage coursing through my veins, a creeping sense of unease began to gnaw at me. As I stumbled along the winding path, my mind started playing tricks on me. Shadows danced in the corners of my vision, and every snap of a twig sent my heart racing. I tried to shake off the feeling of dread, but it clung to me like a persistent shadow. Suddenly, I heard a faint sound coming from up ahead. It was a high-pitched, sinister chuckle like nails on a chalkboard. My blood ran cold as I cautiously approached, the beam of my flashlight trembling in my shaking hand, and then emerging from the darkness like a nightmare come to life. I saw it. A figure stood before me, illuminated by the dim glow of my phone. It was a clown, but there was nothing playful or entertaining about this clown. Its face was painted with grotesque, exaggerated features, and its eyes gleamed with malice. However, this clown had gone to great lengths to look this sinister. This was no cheap Halloween costume my breath caught in my throat. I tried to back away slowly, but the clown had noticed me blocking my path with a wicked grin. Its laughter echoed through the forest, making my skin crawl. Panic surged through me like a tidal wave, and I knew I had to get out of there before it was too late. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and ran as fast as my legs would carry me, the sound of the clown's laughter ringing in my ears. Branches whipped at my face, and roots threatened to trip me at every turn. But I pushed through the pain and fear, desperate to escape. Just when I thought I couldn't run any longer, I burst out of the forest and into the safety of the streetlights. I didn't stop until I reached the sanctuary of my own home, where I collapsed a trembling mess, my mind reeling from the horrors I had just witnessed. And as I sit here now, Recounting my ordeal, I can still hear the clown's laughter echoing in the depths of my memory. It's a sound that will probably haunt me for the rest of my life, a dark reminder of what lurks just out of sight. And though I may have escaped with my life, some scars run deeper than flesh and bone. So if you ever find yourself walking home alone at night, be aware of what might be lurking in the shadows for you never know what horrors may be waiting to claim you as their own. And always remember to bring a fully charged phone, for the light it provides may be your only beacon of hope in the darkness. As a child, 
I remember the lights of the carnival twinkling in the distance, casting a warm, inviting glow against the dark night sky. My mom held my hand tightly as we approached the entrance, her smile mirroring my own excitement. I was just a typical kid, eager for the thrills and delights that awaited within the colorful chaos of the carnival. The air was filled with the scent of popcorn and cotton candy, and the sound of laughter and music enveloped us as we ventured deeper into the heart of the festivities. We wandered from attraction to attraction, soaking in the sights and sounds of the carnival rides and games. But amidst the joyous cacophony, there was something that caught my eye. A figure lurking in the shadows, watching me with an intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. It was a clown, his painted smile twisted into a menacing grin, his eyes locked onto mine with an unsettling focus. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease that gripped me, but no matter where I went, I could feel the weight of those eyes following me like a predator stalking its prey. As the night wore on, my mum decided to take a break and visit the restroom, leaving me alone for a moment. I watched her disappear into the crowd, feeling a little anxious by being left by myself. And that's when I felt a hand on my shoulder, a cold, clammy grip that sent a jolt of fear coursing through my veins. Hey there, kiddo, he said, his voice low and raspy. I couldn't help but notice you admiring my circus ponies. How would you like one of your very own? My heart raced as I stared up at him, my instincts screaming at me to run. But before I could react, he reached out and grabbed my hand, gripping me tight as he began to drag me away from the safety of the carnival grounds. I tried to pull away, my fear mounting with each step we took towards the parking lot. I knew something was terribly wrong, but I was paralyzed by a mixture of fear and confusion. Just as we reached the edge of the lot, I heard a sharp, piercing scream cutting through the air like a knife. I turned to see my mom screaming and running towards us, her face showing an expression of pure terror as she screamed my name. The clown released his grip on my hand, his expression twisting into a snarl of frustration and rage. Without a word, he turned and dashed towards a white van parked nearby. Its engine roared to life as he jumped in and sped away, disappearing into the darkness as quickly as he had appeared. My mom scooped me up in her arms, holding me tightly as she sobbed with relief. We stumbled back towards the carnival grounds, her frantic cries drawing the attention of other people. When we reached the front desk, my mum demanded to know who the clown was and why he had tried to take me. But the worker just stared back at her with wide eyes, filled with confusion. I'm sorry, ma'am, he said. There hasn't been anyone working here as a clown all night. As I sat alone in my dimly lit living room, the eerie glow of the television screen casting flickering shadows across the walls, I couldn't help but feel a shiver run down my spine. It was Halloween night, and my mom had left me in charge of handing out candy to the neighborhood trick-or-treaters while she attended a late-night work function. The evening had started off like any other Halloween, Children dressed in costumes ranging from witches to superheroes had eagerly approached our doorstep, their excited chatter filling the air. But as the night wore on, the stream of visitors dwindled, leaving me alone in the silent house. I had just finished watching a particularly chilling horror movie when the doorbell rang, breaking the silence with its sharp, unexpected sound. Irritated at the interruption, I rose from the couch and made my way to the door, grumbling to myself about late-night trick-or-treaters. I swung the door open, 
fully prepared to give the stranger a piece of my mind, but the words died on my lips as I took in the sight before me. Standing on the doorstep, illuminated by the dim glow of my porch light, was a figure that made me freeze. It was a clown. Not the friendly, colorful kind you see at children's birthday parties either, but a dark, menacing figure clad in tattered, oversized clothes. His face was painted in loud colors, and a grotesque smile plastered across his face. In one hand, he held a dirty, stained pillowcase, and in the other, a small, rusted knife. For a moment, I stood frozen in shock, unable to tear my gaze away from the unsettling sight before me. Then, with a surge of adrenaline, I dumped the remainder of the candy into his pillowcase and slammed the door shut in his face, locking it with trembling fingers. Breathing heavily, I pressed my eye to the peephole, half expecting the clown to have disappeared into the night. But to my horror, he was still there, standing still on my doorstep, his painted grin frozen in place. My heart was hammering in my chest as I stumbled away from the door and retreated upstairs to my bedroom, the sound of my own ragged breathing echoing in my ears. I tried to reassure myself that it was probably just a prank and that the clown would eventually give up and leave when he didn't get a reaction out of me. But then I heard something terrifying. The unmistakable sound of glass shattering, followed by the creaking of floorboards downstairs. Panic seized me and I fumbled for my phone, fingers trembling as I dialed 911. I locked the door and huddled in the corner of my room, clutching the phone to my ear as I whispered frantically for help to the operator on the other end of the line. Minutes stretched as I waited in terrified silence, every nerve in my body screaming. Finally, the distant wail of sirens pierced the night, a beacon of hope cutting through the darkness. Relief flooded through me as I heard the sound of heavy footsteps coming up the stairs, followed by voices shouting commands. The police had arrived. With trembling hands, I unlocked the bedroom door and cautiously made my way into the dimly lit hallway, eyes darting nervously around. To my immense relief, I found myself face to face with a group of uniformed officers, their stern expressions softened by the sight of my terrified face. They quickly swept through the house, their flashlights cutting through the darkness as they searched for any sign of the intruder. But to my horror, they found nothing, just the brick lying in my living room surrounded by broken glass. No clown. They told me when they arrived, the front door was left wide open. As the officers finished their search and prepared to leave, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. Who was the mysterious clown, and what had he wanted with me? As I locked the door behind the departing police car, I couldn't help but glance nervously out into the darkness, half expecting to see the sinister figure lurking from the shadows. But the street was empty, bathed in the cold light emitted by the moon. And yet, despite the reassurance of the empty street, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, waiting for another chance to strike. And as I finally retreated inside, bolting the door behind me, I couldn't help but wonder if I would ever truly feel safe again. As I sit here typing, my heart still races at the memory of that horrifying night. It was just a typical sleepover at my friend Sarah's house. We'd gathered in her cozy basement, a group of giggly teenagers ready for a night of fun. Little did we know, the night would unfold into a chilling tale that still haunts me to this day. The basement was dimly lit, casting eerie shadows across the walls. The air was thick with anticipation as we settled in, armed with snacks and blankets. Sarah had promised us a night we wouldn't forget, and boy, 
did she deliver. As the hours passed, we shared stories, played games and laughed until our sides hurt. But as the clock struck midnight, a sense of unease settled over the room. It was as if a dark cloud had descended upon us, suffocating the warmth and light. That's when Sarah suggested we try something new. She had recently acquired an old Ouija board from a thrift shop, claiming it would add an extra thrill to our night. I'd always been skeptical of such things, but in the spirit of adventure, I agreed to give it a try. We gathered around the board, our fingers trembling with a mixture of excitement and fear. Sarah led the seance, asking if there were any spirits present who wished to communicate with us. At first, there was nothing but silence, the planchette sitting still beneath our fingertips. But then, ever so slowly, it began to move. At first, it was just a gentle glide across the board, spelling out simple words like hello and friend. We laughed nervously, dismissing it as nothing more than our own subconscious movements. But then the messages grew darker. The planchette spelled out names we didn't recognize, along with cryptic warnings of impending doom. Sarah's laughter faded, replaced by a look of genuine fear. She tried to end the seance, but the board refused to cooperate, dragging us deeper into its twisted game. That's when things took a sinister turn. The lights flickered, casting ominous shadows across the room. A chill swept through the air, sending shivers down our spines. And then, out of nowhere, we heard it. A blood-curdling scream pierced the silence, echoing through the darkness with a piercing intensity that froze us in our tracks. It was a sound unlike anything I'd ever heard before, filled with anguish and desperation, as if someone or something was trapped in a never-ending nightmare. We huddled together, our hearts racing as the scream grew louder and more agonizing. It seemed to reverberate off the walls, surrounding us with its haunting presence and filling us with a bone-deep dread. With trembling hands, Sarah reached for the flashlight, desperate to pierce the darkness and reveal the source of our terror. But as the beam cut through the darkness, we were met with an image that will haunt me forever. Standing before us was a figure cloaked in shadows, its features twisted into a grotesque parody of a human face. Its eyes burned with a malevolent light, boring into our souls with a hunger that chilled us to the bone. We screamed in terror, scrambling to escape the basement and the horrors that lurked within. But no matter how fast we ran, it seemed to follow, its presence looming over us like a dark cloud. It wasn't until we reached the safety of the outside world that we dared to breathe a sigh of relief. But even then, the memory of that night will linger, casting darkness over our once carefree lives. So if you ever find yourself tempted to dabble in the supernatural, remember my story. Remember the terror that might be lurking in the darkness, waiting to ensnare its unwary web of nightmares. Stay safe, my friends, and may you never have to face the darkness that I did. As I sat in the dimly lit living room of my friend's house, the eerie glow of the TV casting long shadows across the room I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. We were having a sleepover, a typical Friday night for us, but tonight felt different. Maybe it was the way the wind howled outside, rattling the windows like a restless spirit trying to force its way in. Or perhaps it was the way my friend's dog, usually so calm and friendly, kept whimpering and staring at the staircase leading up to the second floor. Whatever it was, 
I couldn't ignore the sense of unease creeping up my spine. My friend Emily seemed oblivious to my discomfort as she chattered excitedly about the latest horror movie she'd seen. Her enthusiasm was infectious, and I tried to focus on her words rather than the growing sense of dread gnawing at me from the inside. But as the night wore on and the clock ticked closer to midnight, I found it increasingly difficult to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. It was during a pause in our conversation when I first heard it, a soft creaking sound coming from upstairs, like someone walking across the floorboards. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest, and exchanged a nervous glance with Emily. She must have heard it too, because her eyes widened with fear, mirroring my own. Did you hear that? I whispered, my voice barely above a breath. Emily nodded, her face pale in the dim light. Yeah, she replied, her voice barely audible. But it's probably just the house settling or something. I wanted to believe her, I really did. But deep down, I knew it wasn't the house settling. There was something else up there. We tried to brush it off and go back to our conversation. But the atmosphere in the room had shifted, tainted by an unspoken fear that hung heavy in the air. We both knew that neither of us would be able to sleep until we knew for sure what was causing the strange noises upstairs. Summoning every ounce of courage I had, I suggested that we go investigate, convinced that it was better to confront whatever was up there than to sit in fear, waiting for it to come to us. Emily hesitated for a moment, her eyes darting nervously towards the staircase, but ultimately she nodded her agreement. Armed with nothing but a flashlight, we made our way cautiously up the stairs, each step echoing loudly in the silence of the house. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as we reached the top. The hallway stretched out before us, shrouded in darkness with doors lining both sides. We hesitated, unsure of where to start, when suddenly we heard it again, the soft creaking of floorboards, this time coming from the room at the very end of the hall. Heart pounding in my chest, I walked over and took a deep breath before pushing the door open, the light from my flashlight cutting through the darkness like a knife. What I saw on the other side made my blood run cold. Standing in the center of the room was a figure, its back turned to us, its movements slow and deliberate. It was hunched over a safe, their hands skillfully manipulating the lock in a rhythmic, almost hypnotic fashion. I could feel Emily's grip on my arm tighten as we stood frozen in the doorway unable to tear our eyes away from the scene unfolding before us. And then, as if sensing our presence, the figure stopped moving and slowly turned to face us. What I then saw will haunt me for the rest of my days. A masked man, dressed all in black, his eyes gleaming with malice behind his mask. And in his hands, he held a bag filled with stolen valuables. Without a word, Emily and I turned and fled, our screams echoing through the empty house as we ran blindly down the stairs and out into the cold night air. We didn't stop until we were safely back at my house, huddled together on the couch. In the days that followed, we learned that the man had broken into several homes in the neighborhood, stealing whatever he could get his hands on before disappearing into the night. But despite our brush with danger, we were lucky. We had escaped with our lives, our friendship now stronger than ever. As I sit here, trying to gather my thoughts and calm my racing heart, I can still feel the chill of that night creeping up my spine. It was just supposed to be a typical sleepover with the boys, 
filled with gaming marathons and endless junk food. Little did we know, it would turn into a nightmare we'd never forget. It all started innocently enough. My buddies and I had gathered at my place for our monthly gaming session. We were all hardcore gamers, and these nights were our way of unwinding. The room was filled with the glow of multiple screens, the sound of controllers clicking, and the occasional outburst of laughter. As the night wore on, the hours seemed to blur together. We lost track of time, completely absorbed in the virtual world unfolding before us. It wasn't until deep into the night that things took a dark turn. I remember it vividly. We were in the midst of a particularly intense round of Call of Duty when a sudden power outage plunged the room into darkness. At first, we all laughed it off, attributing it to the storm raging outside. But then, things started to get weird. As we fumbled for our phones to use as flashlights, we noticed that something felt off. The air seemed heavier, and an eerie silence had descended upon the room. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears as I scanned the room, trying to shake off the growing sense of unease. That's when we heard it. A faint scratching sound coming from somewhere in the darkness. It was barely audible at first, but it quickly grew louder, more insistent. Panic set in as we realized that we were not alone. With trembling hands, we tried to locate the source of the sound, but it seemed to be coming from all around us. It was as if the very walls of the house had come to life. Suddenly, without warning, the scratching stopped, replaced by a bone-chilling silence. We huddled together, our minds racing with fear and uncertainty. What was happening? Was it some kind of prank, or something far more sinister? Just as we were about to make a run for it, the power flickered back on, bathing the room in harsh fluorescent light. We blinked in the sudden brightness, disoriented and shaken. Relief washed over us as we realized that whatever had happened was over now. We laughed nervously, chalking it up to a freak occurrence. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that we had just brushed up against something beyond our understanding. As dawn broke and the first light of morning filtered through the windows, my friends packed up their gear and prepared to leave. But as we stepped outside into the crisp morning air, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It's been weeks since that night, but the memory still haunts me. I can't help but wonder what really happened in the darkness of my own home. Was it just a glitch in the power grid? or something more sinister. I may never know for sure, but one thing's for certain. I'll never look at a sleepover the same way again. As I sit here, recounting the events of that fateful night, I can still feel the chill running down my spine. It's been weeks since it happened, but the memory remains etched in my mind like a scar that refuses to fade. It was just another typical evening at home, or so I thought. My parents had just left for the weekend, leaving me alone in the house. They trusted me enough to handle a couple of nights by myself, and honestly, I loved being home alone. That is, until something happened. It started innocently enough. I was lounging on the couch, mindlessly scrolling through my phone, when I noticed a flicker of movement out of the corner of my eye. At first, I dismissed it as a trick of the light or perhaps my own tired imagination playing tricks on me. But then it happened again, and this time I couldn't ignore it. I glanced around the dimly lit living room, searching for any sign of what could have caused the movement. Everything seemed normal, yet I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. I tried to brush it off, 
chalking it up to my overactive imagination, but deep down, I knew something wasn't right. As the night wore on, the feeling of being watched intensified, creeping into every corner of the house. I tried to distract myself, turning up the volume on the TV and immersing myself in mindless entertainment, but it was no use. The sense of being watched hung over me like a dark cloud, refusing to dissipate. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I heard something. A soft, barely audible whisper echoing through the empty house. My blood ran cold as the words registered in my mind. Alone. You're alone. I froze my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to locate the source of the voice. But there was nothing, just the eerie silence of the night pressing in on me from all sides. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild, but deep down, I knew better. Terrified, I made my way through the house, checking every room and corner in a desperate attempt to find the source of the whisper. But each time... I came up empty-handed. As the hours dragged on, I felt like a prisoner in my own home, trapped in a nightmare from which there was no escape. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind rattling the windows, sent me spiraling further into paranoia. I was convinced that something was lurking in the darkness, something evil and intent on doing me harm. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, I saw it, a shadowy figure lurking in the corner of the room, its form twisted and distorted like something out of a fever dream. I wanted to scream, to run, to do anything to escape the nightmare unfolding before me, but fear rooted me to the spot, rendering me powerless to move. But then, as quickly as it had appeared, the figure vanished, leaving me alone in the suffocating darkness once more. I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to make sense of what I had just seen. Was it real? Or just another trick of my panicked mind? I didn't stick around to find out. I grabbed my phone and bolted out of the house, not stopping until I was far, far away. I never used to believe in the kind of horror stories you see in movies. You know, the ones where the protagonist is always running for their life from some unseen terror. I always thought those were just for entertainment, nothing more. But one night changed everything for me. It was a night like any other. I had just finished dinner and settled in to watch some TV before bed. My roommate was out of town for the weekend, leaving me alone in our small apartment. As I sat on the couch, mindlessly flipping through channels, I heard a faint sound coming from outside. At first, I brushed it off as just the wind or maybe some neighborhood kids playing around. But then it continued, growing louder as time passed. It sounded like footsteps, slow and deliberate, coming closer and closer to the front door. My heart started to race as I realized I was alone. I tiptoed over to the window and peeked through the blinds, trying to see who it was without being seen myself. But the darkness outside made it impossible to make out any figures. I reached for my phone, fingers trembling as I dialed 911. But before I could even hit the call button, I heard a loud bang from the front door. My breath caught in my throat as I watched the doorknob jiggle violently, followed by the sound of someone trying to force their way inside. Panic set in as I realized I was trapped, with nowhere to hide. Then, just as suddenly as it had started, the banging stopped. For a moment, there was nothing but silence, so thick you could almost feel it pressing in on you. I strained my ears, listening for any sign of movement outside, but there was nothing. 
Minutes passed like hours as I waited, too terrified to move. Finally, after a while, I mustered up the courage to inch closer to the door, my heart pounding in my chest with every step. I hesitated for a moment before reaching out and cautiously turning the doorknob. To my relief, the door was still locked and there was no sign of anyone outside. I let out a shaky breath, feeling a wave of relief wash over me. But just as I was about to retreat back into the safety of my apartment, I noticed something strange. There, lying on the welcome mat, was a single red rose. I picked it up cautiously, turning it in my hands trying to make sense of it. Without thinking, I dropped it in a hurry and stumbled back into my apartment, slamming the door shut behind me. I spent the rest of the night huddled in my room, too afraid to sleep or even move. Every creak of the floorboard sent me into a state of panic, convinced that whoever had tried to break in was still out there, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. It wasn't until the first light of dawn filtered through the window that I dared to venture out of my room. I checked every lock and window, making sure they were secure before finally allowing myself to breathe a sigh of relief. But as I opened my front door, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. And as I glanced down at my welcome mat, now empty except for a few petals, I knew that whatever had happened last night was far from over. I remember it vividly, the feeling of unease creeping up my spine as I stood in the dimly lit hallway of my house. It was late, well past midnight, and the only sound that echoed through the empty rooms was the soft hum of the air conditioning. My parents were out of town for the weekend, leaving me alone in the house for the first time in years. At first, I relished the idea of having the place to myself. But now, as I stood there in the silence, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone after all. I made my way cautiously down the hall, the floorboards creaking beneath my feet with each step. Every shadow seemed to dance and twist in the darkness, playing tricks on my tired mind. I tried to brush off the feeling of dread that washed over me, chalking it up to the overactive imagination of a person who had spent too much time watching horror movies. As I reached the end of the hallway, I paused, my hand hovering over the doorknob to my bedroom. The room beyond was shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from the faint glow of the street lamp outside my window. I hesitated for a moment, debating whether to retreat back to the living room or to brave the unknown darkness. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room felt colder than the rest of the house. I flicked on the light switch, illuminating the room in a soft yellow glow. But even in the light, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I quickly busied myself with getting ready for bed hoping that the mundane task would distract me from my growing sense of unease. But as I slipped beneath the covers and closed my eyes, the feeling only intensified. Every creak of the house, every rustle of the wind outside, sent my heart racing in my chest. I tried to convince myself that I was being paranoid, that there was nothing to be afraid of. But then I heard something disturbing a soft tapping sound coming from the far corner of my room. I froze, my breath catching in my throat as I strained to listen. The tapping grew louder, more insistent, as if whatever was making the sound was trying to get my attention. Panic surged through me, and I jumped out of bed, fumbling for the light switch. But before I could reach it, something grabbed hold of my ankle, dragging me back towards the darkness. I screamed 
thrashing and kicking with all my might, but the grip only tightened, pulling me further into the shadows. With one final burst of strength, I kicked myself free and ran towards the door, throwing it open and sprinting down the hallway. I didn't stop until I was outside the neighbor's house, kicking and screaming at their door to let me in. At last, they let me in and called the police for me. They let me wait there until the police arrived. They came and searched my house but found no one inside. But to my horror, they found that the basement window had been pried open. I had finally done it. After years of saving every penny, I had managed to buy my own house. It wasn't anything extravagant, just a cozy little place tucked away in a quiet neighborhood. But to me, it was perfect. I could already imagine the memories I would make within those walls, the dinners shared with friends, the lazy Sundays spent lounging in the backyard. The first few weeks were a whirlwind of excitement and unpacking. I kept myself busy with arranging furniture and hanging up pictures, reveling in the feeling of finally having a place to call my own. But as the initial rush of moving wore off, I began to notice something strange. It started with the noises. At first, they were barely noticeable, just a faint scratching coming from somewhere deep within the walls. I brushed it off as the house settling, convincing myself that it was perfectly normal for an old building to make strange sounds. But the noises didn't stop. They grew louder, more persistent, echoing through the empty rooms late into the night. I tried to ignore them, burying myself under my pillow and willing myself to sleep. But each night they seemed to grow louder, more insistent, until they were impossible to ignore. I tried to tell myself that it was a perfectly logical explanation for the noises. Maybe a family of mice had taken up residence within the walls, or perhaps there was a pipe leaking somewhere causing the strange sounds. But then, things started to disappear. It started with small things at first. A spoon here, a can of soup there, I chalked it up to absent-mindedness, blaming my own forgetfulness for misplacing items around the house. But as time went by, the disappearances became more frequent and more noticeable. I would come home from work to find my cupboards bare, the contents of my pantry mysteriously depleted overnight. It was as if someone was living in my house, helping themselves to my food while I was gone. I searched every nook and cranny, desperate for any sign of an intruder, but there was nothing. No footprints, no signs of forced entry, nothing to indicate that anyone else had been inside my home. Then, one day while cleaning the house, I made a chilling discovery. Hidden away in a corner of the basement was a small door, barely noticeable against the faded wallpaper. Curiosity peaked. I approached cautiously, heart pounding in my chest. With trembling hands, I reached out and pushed the door open, revealing a small, cramped space beyond. What I saw inside filled me with horror. The room was tiny, barely big enough to stand in, and strewn with empty food wrappers and discarded trash. And in the far corner, hidden in the shadows, I could see movement, a figure huddled in the darkness, watching me. I stumbled back in shock as I realized the truth. Someone had been living in my walls, lurking in the shadows, feasting on my food while I slept just a few feet away. With a sense of dread creeping over me, I fled the house, stumbling out into the daylight and dialing 911 with shaking hands. When the police arrived, they searched the house and cautiously ventured into the cramped space, their flashlights cutting through the darkness. To their surprise, they found a makeshift living area, complete with a bed made of old blankets and pillows, 
along with various stolen items scattered around. And in the corner, crouched in fear, was the intruder. Upon interrogation, the man confessed to sneaking into the house shortly after I had moved in. He had been living in the hidden space for weeks, venturing out only at night to steal food and other necessities. His explanation was one of desperation, having fallen on hard times and resorting to extreme measures to survive. I don't think I will ever feel completely alone in my home again. I never thought I'd find myself in such a terrifying situation, but here I am, recounting the horror that unfolded after me and my partner moved into our seemingly quaint new home. It all started innocently enough. My partner and I had recently purchased a house, a charming little place nestled in a quiet neighborhood. We were thrilled at the prospect of making it our own and creating memories together. Little did we know, those memories would soon be tainted by unspeakable terror. One evening, as we were enjoying some intimate company in the comfort of our living room, our passion inadvertently led to a clumsy collision with the bookshelf. I remember the moment vividly, the brief panic as I closed my eyes, fearing the worst as I waited for the sound of falling objects. But to my relief, there was silence. When I cautiously opened my eyes, I was met with a sight that chilled me to the core. The bookshelf, though untouched by our clumsy encounter, had shifted slightly, revealing a narrow gap behind it. My heart pounding, I scrambled to get dressed, my mind racing with thoughts of what could lie beyond. With trembling hands, I pushed the bookshelf aside and was met with a sight that defied all logic. A set of stairs descended into the darkness, leading to a space that shouldn't exist. Our house was not listed as having a basement, and yet here was undeniable evidence to the contrary. Fear clawed at my insides as I exchanged a worried glance with my partner. Without exchanging a word, we both knew what had to be done. With a deep breath, I took the first step into the unknown, my partner close behind. The air grew heavy and stale as we descended deeper. The only sound was the echo of our footsteps, each one a reminder of the surreal nightmare we had stumbled upon. As we reached the bottom of the staircase, my heart sank at the sight before us. It was a room straight out of a horror movie. Rusty chains hung from the walls, their purpose too sinister to contemplate. Torture implements lay scattered across the floor, each one more disturbing than the last. And in the corner, illuminated by a flickering light, sat a single white plastic chair, a stark contrast to the darkness that surrounded it. And mounted on the wall was an ancient CCTV camera. Its lens stared back at us, a silent witness to the horrors that had unfolded in this hidden chamber. Fear and disbelief gripped me as I fumbled for my phone, my hands shaking as I dialed the emergency number. The voice on the other end was calm and reassuring, but I could hear the disbelief in their tone as I frantically tried to explain our situation. Minutes stretched into eternity as we waited for help to arrive, each passing second filled with the dread of what we might encounter next. And then, finally, the sound of approaching sirens broke the silence, filling me with a sense of relief I hadn't known was possible. The police arrived soon after, their expressions grim as they surveyed the scene before them. Questions tumbled from their lips as they began their investigation, but I could offer little in the way of answers. How could I explain the inexplicable horrors we had stumbled upon in our very own home? As we were led away from the scene, 
I couldn't shake the feeling this would haunt me for the rest of my life. A stark reminder of the darkness that lurks just beneath the surface of the world we know. It all began innocently enough. My husband and I had just welcomed our newborn daughter into the world, and with cramped quarters in our small apartment, it was time for us to find a family home. We stumbled upon what seemed like a stroke of luck, a beautiful house at an unbelievably affordable price. The owners were eager to sell practically thrusting the keys into our hands as if desperate to rid themselves of the property. At the time, we chalked it up to good fortune and signed the papers without a second thought. The first few weeks in our new home passed without incident. The usual chaos of unpacking and settling in kept us occupied, and any odd noises or creaks in the night were dismissed as the quirks of an old house. But then, as the years went by, little signs began to surface, subtle hints that something was amiss. It started with our daughter, Emily. At first, we thought nothing of her chatter about her new friend. Imaginary companions were a common phase for children her age, after all. But as the days stretched into weeks, her obsession with her unseen playmate became increasingly concerning. She would spend hours giggling and whispering to someone that only she could see. My unease grew when Emily began insisting that her friend join us for meals, setting out an extra place at the table and talking to the empty chair beside her. I exchanged worried glances with my husband, but we both agreed that it was likely just a passing phase. However, things took a chilling turn one evening when I went to tuck Emily into bed. As I kissed her forehead and turned to leave, she grabbed my hand, her eyes wide with an intensity I had never seen in her before. But the man wants to play with me, she whispered, her voice barely above a breathy murmur. Confused and more than a little frustrated, I tried to reason with her. Oh, honey, there is no man, I said gently hoping to dispel whatever imaginary scenario she had concocted. But just as the words left my lips, a loud crash erupted from the closet. Toys clattered to the floor, their electronic voices springing to life in a discordant symphony of sound. I froze, my heart hammering in my chest, as Emily's laughter rang out in the room. See, Mom? I said he wanted to play with me, she exclaimed, her joyous eyes chilling me to the bone. In that moment, I knew that something was terribly wrong. I scooped Emily into my arms and fled from her room, the echoes of her laughter following me down the hall. I tried to explain to my husband what had happened, but he brushed off my concerns with a dismissive wave of his hand. He attributed Emily's behavior to an overactive imagination refusing to entertain the idea that something paranormal lurked within the walls of our home. Desperate for answers, I turned to the internet, scouring forums and websites for any clue that might shed light on our predicament. And it was there, buried deep within the archives of local history, that I stumbled upon the truth. A previous owner of the house had been a single father, his life shattered by tragedy when his daughter was killed in a car accident. Distraught and consumed by grief, he had taken his own life, his body discovered hanging in that very closet that now housed Emily's toys. I'm not the kind of person who believes in ghosts or the supernatural. I've always been more skeptical relying on logic and reason to explain away the noises of the night. But what happened to me one fateful night changed everything I thought I knew. It was a typical evening like any other. I crawled into bed, 
exhausted from a long day of work and drifted off into a restless sleep. However, my peaceful slumber was soon interrupted by a strange sound. At first, I dismissed it as part of a dream, but as I slowly regained consciousness, I realized it was coming from my phone. Groggily, I reached for my phone on the bedside table and squinted at the bright screen. 3 a.m. What could possibly be so important at this hour? As I glanced at the screen, I noticed something unsettling. Siri was activated and her voice echoed in the darkness of my room. What scared me the most was the fact that I hadn't uttered a single word. I frowned, my confusion growing. What was going on? Why was Siri turned on? Then, I noticed something even more chilling. The screen displayed a series of questions that Siri had supposedly answered, all while I was asleep. Questions like, what is my name? And what is my phone number? My heart pounded in my chest as I scrolled through the list of questions, each one more disturbing than the last. Fear gnawed at my mind as I realized the implications of what was happening. Someone, or something, was manipulating Siri, using her to gain information on me in the dead of night. With a quivering voice, I asked another question, my voice barely above a whisper. Is anyone there? The response came quickly. I am the one who watches you while you sleep, Samantha. Panic surged through me and I bolted upright in bed, my heart racing as I glanced around the darkened room. Was someone in my house? Had they been watching me all this time? But there was no one there, just the eerie silence of the night, broken only by the faint hum of electronics and the sound of my own breathing. I desperately tried to silence Siri, to put an end to this nightmare. But no matter how many times I tried to shut her off, she continued to respond with the same unsettling answers, her voice growing more insistent with each passing moment. As the minutes ticked by, I felt a sense of dread settle over me like a suffocating blanket. I was trapped in a waking nightmare, with no way out and no one to turn to for help. But just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, something happened. The voice of Siri began to fade, growing fainter and fainter until it was nothing more than a distant echo in the recesses of my mind. As suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The room fell silent once again, and I was left alone in the darkness. It was one of those restless nights where sleep eluded me like a fleeting shadow. Tossing and turning in bed, I finally decided to give up on the pursuit of sleep and wandered downstairs to the kitchen, hoping a glass of warm milk might lure my weary mind into submission. As I reached the bottom step, a peculiar sensation washed over me, a chill that seemed to seep through my very bones. Ignoring the goosebumps prickling my skin, I flicked on the kitchen light and poured myself a drink, my eyes scanning the darkness beyond the window. That's when I saw it. A figure standing just beyond the edge of the garden, obscured by the inky blackness of the night. My heart leapt into my throat as I squinted, but the figure remained shrouded in darkness a mere silhouette against the backdrop of the moonlit night. My mind raced with possibilities, each more terrifying than the last. Was it a trick of the shadows, my sleep-deprived brain playing tricks on me? Or was there truly someone or something lurking just beyond the safety of my home? With trembling hands, I reached for my phone the urge to call the police warring with the fear of drawing attention to myself. But before I could make a decision, the figure vanished into the night, 
leaving me alone with my racing thoughts. For the remainder of the night, I sat huddled in the kitchen, the warm glow of my phone screen offering me little solace against the encroaching darkness. Every creak of the floorboards and every rustle of the wind outside made my heart rise, and I found myself jumping at the slightest sound. Morning came, casting its feeble light into the corners of the room. With the first rays of dawn, the fear that had gripped me throughout the night began to fade, replaced by a sense of uneasy calm. Perhaps it had all been a product of my overactive imagination, a nightmare spun from the fabric of exhaustion and fear. But as the day wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, a sensation that lingered like a shadow at the edge of my consciousness. Every shadow seemed to hold a hidden menace, every sound a whispered threat. That night, as the clock struck three, I found myself once again unable to sleep. The events of the previous night haunted my thoughts, refusing to be banished by any reason or logic. And then just as before, I felt it. The same bone-deep chill that had gripped me the night before. This time, I was ready. With a newfound determination born of fear and desperation, I crept to the window and peered outside, my heart pounding in my chest. And there, just beyond the edge of the garden, stood the figure once again, its form a dark blot against the moonlit landscape. But this time, there was something different about it, a sense of malevolence that seemed to radiate from its very being. It stood perfectly still, its eyes fixed on me with a cold intensity that made me freeze. Without stopping to think, I bolted from the room, my footsteps echoing through the silent house. I didn't dare look back, didn't dare entertain the thought of what might happen if I did. All that mattered was escape, escape from whatever lurked in the darkness outside. I made it to the front door, my hands fumbling with the lock in my haste to escape. And then, just as I felt the door give way beneath my fingers, I heard it, a low, guttural growl that seemed to reverberate through the very walls of the house. With a cry of terror, I flung the door open and stumbled out into the night, the cool night air washing over me. I didn't dare look back, didn't dare entertain the thought of what might be lurking just beyond the edge of the darkness. And so, dear reader, as I sit here now recounting the events of that fateful night, I can't help but wonder, what was it that lurked in the darkness outside my home? And more importantly, what might happen if it were to ever return? For in the dead of night, when all is still and silent, there are things that roam the earth, things that defy explanation and logic, things that exist only in the darkest of places. And as long as they remain there, lurking just beyond the edge of the light, none of us are truly ever safe. It was one of those nights where sleep seemed like a distant dream. I tossed and turned in my bed, the darkness of the room pressing in on me like a heavy blanket. I glanced at the digital clock on my nightstand. 2.59 blinked back at me, but as I lay there, my mind racing with thoughts I couldn't quite grasp, I heard it. It started as a faint scratching sound, echoing through the stillness of the night. I tried to brush it off as my imagination, but then it came again, louder this time, more insistent. My heart began to race as I sat up in bed, straining to listen. The sound seemed to be coming from downstairs, from the old storage room that we hardly ever used. I got up and glanced nervously at the door, feeling a chill creep up my spine. What could possibly be making that noise at this hour? 
As I made my way down the stairs, the scratching grew louder, more frantic. It sounded almost desperate, as if whatever was making it was trying desperately to escape from whatever darkness lurked in that storage room. I reached the bottom of the stairs and paused, my hand hovering over the door handle. My heart was pounding in my chest now, my palms slick with sweat, but it was too late to turn back now. I gripped the handle and swung the door open, the dim light from the hallway spilling into the room. What I saw next will haunt me for the rest of my life. There, huddled in the corner of the room was a figure. Its back was turned to me, its shoulders shaking with what I could only assume was fear. But as I stepped closer, I realized with a sickening jolt that something was horribly wrong. The figure seemed to be melting, for lack of a better word. Its skin was sagging and drooping like warm candle wax. And the smell, dear God, the smell was enough to make my stomach churn. It was like rotting meat mixed with something far fouler, something I couldn't even begin to describe. I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling with shock and horror. What was happening? Was this some kind of sick joke? But as I watched, frozen in terror, the figure began to turn towards me, its face contorted into a grotesque mask of agony. I wanted to scream, to run, to do anything to get away from whatever this thing was, but my body refused to move, rooted to the spot as if held in place by some unseen force. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure was gone. One moment it was there, and the next, nothing. Only the faint echo of that scratching sound remained hanging in the air like a ghostly whisper. I bolted from the room, slamming the door shut behind me. I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of my own bedroom, where I locked the door and collapsed into bed, shaking and gasping for breath. I don't know what I saw in that storage room, and I'm not sure I want to know. All I know is that I will never forget the terror of that night, or the sound of that scratching, echoing through the darkness like an omen of doom. And as I lay here, shaking in my own bed, I can only pray that whatever it was stays far away from me and from anyone else foolish enough to stumble into its path. So, remember, the next time you hear a strange noise in the dead of night, think twice before investigating. You never know what horrors might be lurking in the shadows, waiting to drag you down into the depths of madness. As I sit here, typing this out, I can't shake the feeling that he's still out there, watching, waiting. It all started innocently enough, just a few strange occurrences that I brushed off as mere coincidences. But as the days passed, the incidents grew more unnerving, more sinister. Now, I'm convinced that I have a stalker, someone who's fixated on me, someone who won't stop until he gets what he wants. It was a chilly autumn afternoon when I first noticed something was wrong. I was walking home from school, and as I glanced over my shoulder, a feeling of inexplicable dread prickled at the back of my neck. And that's when I saw him, lurking behind a tree, his eyes boring into me with a disturbing intensity. I quickened my pace, my heart hammering in my chest. But no matter how fast I walked, he was always there, lurking just out of sight, like a shadow haunting my every move. Over the next few days, the encounters became more frequent, more disturbing. I would catch glimpses of him everywhere I went, lurking from the shadows, his face obscured by darkness. Sometimes, I would hear footsteps echoing behind me, quickening when I quickened, slowing when I slowed. I confided in my friends, but they brushed off my fears as paranoia, telling me that I was imagining things. 
But I knew deep down that I wasn't crazy, that there was someone out there who was watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And then, one night, he made his move. I'd stayed late at school to study for an upcoming exam, the library quiet and deserted save for the soft hum of fluorescent lights. As I made my way home, I could sense his presence, a cold chill creeping up my spine as I realized that he was following me once again. I tried to ignore him, to focus on putting one foot in front of the other, but his presence was like a weight pressing down on me, suffocating me with fear. And then, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, he stepped out from the shadows, his face twisted into a malevolent grin. I froze, my blood turning to ice as I stared into his cold, unfeeling eyes. And then, without a word, he lunged at me, his hands reaching out to grab me, to pull me away into his darkness. Instinct kicked in, and I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced through the empty streets, his footsteps echoing behind me like the beat of impending doom. I didn't dare look back, didn't dare slow down. I don't know how long I ran or how far I traveled, but eventually I stumbled into the safety of my own home, my breaths coming in ragged gasps as I collapsed onto the floor. And as I lay there shaking and crying, I couldn't help but wonder how close I was to becoming a victim of something truly horrifying. I remember the first time I laid eyes on him, sitting across from me at a dimly lit cafe. He had a charming smile, messy hair, and beautiful blue eyes. Let's call him Jake. Jake was your average guy, or so I thought. We met through Tinder, the modern-day love roulette where you never quite know what you're going to get. Our conversation flowed easily enough but there was something off about him. Maybe it was the way he looked at me, like he was dissecting my every word. Despite my reservations, I agreed to a second date. Maybe I was just being paranoid, I thought. But as the days passed, Jake's texts became increasingly frequent and intense. He wanted to see me again, to spend every waking moment together. It was suffocating, to say the least. I tried to let him down gently, but he didn't take the hint. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. It started with messages, dozens of them flooding my inbox every hour. Then came the phone calls, relentless and incessant. I blocked his number, but then he started to contact me through social media. I was terrified, but I didn't want to involve the authorities just yet. Maybe I could handle it on my own, I naively thought. But then he started showing up uninvited, lurking outside my apartment building. I would catch glimpses of him out of the corner of my eye, his figure disappearing into the crowd before I could confront him. I felt like I was losing my mind, like I was being watched every waking moment. One night, I woke up to the sound of scratching at my bedroom window. Heart pounding, I mustered up the courage to investigate, only to find nothing but darkness staring back at me. I told myself it was just my imagination that I was letting fear get the best of me. But deep down, I knew it was him, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I couldn't take it anymore. I packed a bag and fled to a friend's house, hoping to escape the clutches of my stalker. But even there, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being hunted like prey. I was trapped in a nightmare with no way out. Eventually, I mustered up the courage to go to the police, to tell them about the man who had been terrorizing me for weeks. They assured me they would do everything in their power to apprehend him. But deep down, I knew it wouldn't be that easy. And then, just when I thought I was safe, he found me again. 
I was walking home from work one night when I felt a presence behind me. A cold chill ran down my spine. I quickened my pace, desperate to escape, but it was no use. He was too fast. I don't remember much of what happened next, only flashes of pain and terror as he dragged me into an alley. But somehow, against all odds, I managed to break free to fight back with every ounce of strength I had left. And as I stumbled back out into the light, bruised and bloodied but alive, I knew that I would never be the same again. I had always enjoyed late night walks. There's something about the quiet of the streets, the gentle breeze, and the occasional rustle of leaves that soothes my mind. Last night, however, was different. It was the night I saw something that shook me to my core. As I strolled along the dimly lit street, my thoughts wandered aimlessly. The only sound was the faint hum of distant traffic. Suddenly, a streak of light caught my eye. At first, I thought it was a shooting star, and like a child, I made a wish. But as I watched, the light didn't fade away like a typical shooting star would. Instead, it grew brighter, illuminating the night sky with an eerie glow. Confusion mingled with excitement as I squinted up at the sky, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. The object began to move, darting across the sky with rapid, impossible sharpness. It moved unlike anything I had ever seen before, defying the laws of physics with each erratic turn. A low rumbling sound filled the air, sending shivers down my spine. My heart raced as the object came to a sudden stop, hovering ominously in the night sky. It felt as though it was staring right at me, despite being countless miles away. Fear gripped me as I stood frozen to the spot, unable to tear my eyes away from the mysterious object. And then, with a speed that defied comprehension, it shot upwards, disappearing into the darkness. I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling with disbelief. What had I just witnessed? Was it some kind of elaborate hoax, or had I truly seen something otherworldly? I hurried home, the events of the night swirling through my mind like a whirlwind. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me like a suffocating blanket. As I reached the safety of my home, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. But deep down, I knew that what I had seen would haunt me for the rest of my days. And so, I did the only thing I could think of. I wrote this story, hoping that sharing my experience would bring some semblance of closure. The memory of that mysterious object, with its impossible movements and piercing gaze, will forever linger in the darkest corners of my mind. And who knows, perhaps one day it will return, casting its eerie glow over the world once more. But until then, I can only wonder and wait, hoping that I never again encounter whatever it was that lurks beyond the stars. I jolted awake, my heart racing, sweat beading on my forehead. The room was dark, save for the faint glow of the street lamp outside, casting eerie shadows across the walls. I lay there, disoriented, trying to shake off the remnants of the nightmare that had gripped me. In the dream, I was lying in bed just like I was now. But then, without warning, I felt a strange sensation wash over me like a cold breeze creeping under my skin. Suddenly, I was no longer in my room. Instead, I found myself in a cold, sterile environment surrounded by blinding white light. Confusion and fear gripped me as I realized I was strapped to some sort of operating table. 
panic surged through my veins as I struggled against the restraints, desperately trying to make sense of my surroundings. That's when I saw them, three figures looming over me, their features obscured by darkness. They were gray-skinned and slender, with large almond-shaped eyes that seemed to pierce through to my very soul. I tried to scream, to beg for mercy, but no sound escaped my lips. I was paralyzed, trapped in a nightmare of my own making. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. I was back in my bed, drenched in sweat, my heart pounding in my chest. Relief flooded through me as I realized it had all been a terrible nightmare. I took deep breaths, trying to steady my racing heartbeat, and glanced around the room, reassuring myself that I was safe at home. But as I lay there trying to calm my frayed nerves, a cold chill crept down my spine. Something felt off. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that something sinister lurked just beyond the edge of my perception. I forced myself to push aside my irrational fears and tried to focus on getting back to sleep. It took me longer than usual, but eventually exhaustion claimed me, pulling me back into the realm of dreams. When I woke up the next morning, the events of the previous night seemed like a distant memory until I caught sight of myself in the bathroom mirror. As I brushed my teeth, I noticed a strange mark behind my ear, a thin red line that hadn't been there before. My blood ran cold as I realized what it was, a cut, small and barely noticeable, but undeniably real. Panic surged through me as the memories of the nightmare came flooding back, the events of the night before suddenly crystal clear in my mind. I stumbled back from the mirror, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to make sense of what had happened. Had it all been a nightmare? Or had it been all too real? I have been flying for over two decades, and in all my years as a pilot, I'd never experienced anything quite like what happened on that fateful night. The sky stretched out before me, a vast expanse of darkness speckled with shimmering stars. It was the kind of night that made you feel small and insignificant against the backdrop of the universe. I was cruising at a steady altitude, my small plane humming softly as it cut through the air. Everything seemed normal, just another routine flight under the blanket of night. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of something strange. At first, I thought it was just a trick of the light, a glimmer of starlight bouncing off my windshield. But as I looked closer, I realized it was something else entirely. There, hovering in the distance, was a shape unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was sleek and metallic, with strange lights blinking rhythmically along its surface. It didn't resemble any aircraft I knew of, and it certainly wasn't any kind of weather balloon or satellite. It was, for lack of a better word, otherworldly. My heart began to race as I watched the object, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. I reached for my radio, intending to contact air traffic control and report the sighting. But before I could do anything, the object moved. It didn't fly away or dart off into the night sky like any normal aircraft would. Instead, it seemed to glide effortlessly, moving closer to my plane with an eerie grace. Panic surged through me as I realized just how close it was getting. I veered sharply to the side, trying to put some distance between myself and the unknown object, but it matched my movements effortlessly, staying right on my tail. 
I could feel my hands shaking as I struggled to maintain control of the plane. Fear clawed at my chest, threatening to overwhelm me. What was this thing? Where had it come from? And more importantly, what did it want with me? As the object drew closer, I could make out more details. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. The surface seemed to ripple and shift, as if it were alive and strange symbols glowed softly along its edges. I tried to rationalize what I was seeing, to tell myself it was some kind of experimental aircraft or military drone, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. This was something beyond human comprehension, something that defied explanation. Suddenly, without warning, the object veered off to the side, disappearing into the night as quickly as it had appeared. I sat there in silence for a moment, my heart still pounding in my chest, trying to make sense of what had just happened. But there was no rational explanation. I had come face to face with something that defied all logic and reason, something that had shaken me to my very core. I eventually regained my composure enough to guide the plane back to solid ground, but the memory of that night has haunted me ever since. I've spent countless hours trying to make sense of what I saw, but the truth remains elusive. All I know is that we are not alone in this universe, and whatever else is out there, it's watching us from afar, waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. So the next time you look up at the night sky, remember that you never know what might be looking back down at you.